Thanks, Justin. Well, the holiday shopping season, it is upon us. This year, create a budget for all of your expenses, and here's the clue. Stick to it. That's right. Certified financial planner and president of Shakiba Capital, Trevor Shakiba, is here with us. Five tips to help us stay on track during the holidays. And Trevor, we see you every Monday. You bring us these great tips, and you say the holiday season is a time when a lot of folks get into trouble. Yeah, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago. You know, you may have done a fantastic job so far, but you got to be careful now because a lot of times you can blow yourself up, and it's really easy to start off the next year four or five thousand dollars in debt, uh. and then you're digging yourself out for four or five months. So really pay attention. Uh, my first tip here is don't let these two months blow yourself up. And my tip is really try to stay away from credit cards. Not just any credit cards, though, but be careful when you go into those stores and those special offers they oh, have. Oh, yeah, the they get you. The store credit card. Yes. Like, save an extra 10% today if you sign up. Exactly. Just say no to that. I, I would, um, you know, whatever they may be trying to give you, it's typically not worth it, in my opinion, because that's, an, that's just an additional card. You're probably going to forget about it and then you get that first bill in January or February. So be careful, stay on track, and finish strong here. Absolutely. Also, and this is your tip throughout the year as well, set a budget and stick to it. What's really interesting is I know finally the procrastinators unite because the studies show that if you start shopping earlier, you're actually going to spend more money. Yeah, well, look, remember who you're going up against here. This is a multi, multi billion dollar industry that spends hundreds, if not billions of dollars on how to market and they're very, very good at it. So that's why I mean, have a budget, right? And stick to that budget no matter what. And, and, and look, if you do that, you're gonna be much better off. And that really kind of goes into my third point here, which is th create that list. Yes. And look, I, people make fun of me for that and I'm totally okay with that, but I actually make a list of who I want to buy these gifts for, so I don't forget. And I typically put an estimated amount. Here is the issue. If you just randomly go in to these different stores, yeah. okay, it is going to end up very poorly for you because Absolutely. they're very good at that marketing and then you're gonna walk out of there spending way more than you wanted to. It's true, if you're randomly shopping and you think, oh, I can't figure out what to get for Courtney. Oh, she might like this, she might like this. You're probably overspending without a game plan, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, but at least if you have a plan, you can go in, kind of have an idea, it's gonna work out a lot better than just kind of randomly going around and, and seeing what happens. Yeah, because it starts to add up. A $20 here, $40 here, it starts to add up very yeah. quickly. This one kind of frightens me though, Trevor, I'm not, not gonna lie. Okay. Consider DIY gifts. It's yeah. not my forte. Why does it frighten you, Courtney? Well, because I feel bad for anybody that's gonna receive it. It's just not my good, it's oh, not a forte. It's sweet though. I could yeah. maybe bake a cake. Well, look, Perfect. I say this, I think I said this last year, but of all the gifts I've got from my wonderful and beautiful wife, Christina, I really only remember one, and it was the cheapest one, okay? So it was when we were dating, we were both very poor, so we didn't have a lot of money. She created this coupon book, right? Yeah. And it was kind of like, hey, if you want me to make dinner or we can, you know, go to this specific place that you choose, it had to have been less than $5. I actually still have it, Aww. and it's the gift I still remember today. So my, my point is here is that you can do something, and even if it turns out tragic, <laughs> it'll be memorable, and it'll be a lot cheaper than going, you know, That's and, true. And going to the mall and Or aimlessly wandering around. I don't know what to get, so. That's typically me. I have to say, though, this year, Trevor, we are doing DIY gifts in my family. You are? Yeah, with my mom and my sister and the nieces, because every year we've said, you know, we always buy way too much stuff. People get way too many gifts. And this year, we are actually, for the first time, sticking to that plan. And I'm so excited because now, instead of last minute, like, wrapping these gifts, right. we're going to spend more time baking in the kitchen right. and spending together. time together. Yeah, I love it. Look, it's it's more about those memories and those experiences. And that's why that example is so I actually just got it out and looked at it. I still have some coupons left. And I need to use them. You gotta turn those in. Is there an expiration date? <laughs> what are the leftover coupons? What's on them? <laughs> well, probably, I don't know if I should go into that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> that right. might be for Valentine's Day. Yes, I don't yes. know. So. <laughs> and you say that it's never too early to start planning for next year. Because if someone, Trevor, is setting aside just a few bucks, over the year that adds yeah. up and then we can avoid this credit card spending drama. Yeah, so t two things here. I think the, the math I did was $40 per paycheck equals a thousand bucks at the end of the year. And then really the, the, the main point here is, is that when you have skin in the game and you felt that pain all year, 
it's going to be much more likely that you stick to that budget as opposed to just getting those cards and, and racking up and having, you know, a bunch of stuff again. So Yeah. And and like you said at the top of the segment, you do not want to spend January, February, digging April, out. May digging out of yeah. this credit card debt. That's yeah. not a good feeling. And remember, when when it comes to building wealth, it's those small little wins. It's not about, you know, winning the lottery, although of course you w would get wealthy if you won the lottery, but doing those right things consistently over time is what builds wealth. And it's gotta be, you gotta do it now. Trevor, thanks so much. Thank you. Great information. By the way, to connect with Trevor, just email him at trevor at shakibacapital.com. I still wanna know what those last coupons are for. Maybe can you, you let can us know? Right? Okay. okay. <laughs>